Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about integration by parts. I would say this is the first big topic you learn in Calculus 2. And so therefore, I'm assuming you're already familiar and pretty good with integrals from Calc 1. So I'm not going to be explaining anything from Calc 1 as we go through these problems. So first we have the formula. The formula is you have the integral of u times dv, where u and dv stand for something. And then the integral is going to become uv minus v du. And the reason why you would do this is because you probably know this integral now, and this part without the integral is just gone, so it's already solved. And so I'm not gonna be explaining any more about the formula. Instead, we're just gonna look at some practice problems. But one thing I will say before we get started is that what I'm going to do is, at the start of my integral problem, I'm going to find and declare my u and my dv part, and then I'm going to ask myself what is du and what is the original v. So you'll notice I'll take the derivative of u and I will be taking the integral of dv. And then one more thing worth mentioning as a little shortcut for you, there are a couple rules that we can use to help us because some things are always u and other things are always dv. For instance, if you ever see a natural log of x, that will always be your u. And if you see an arctangent of x, that will always be your u. Similarly, if you see an e to the x, then that will always be your dv. Or if you see a sine x or a cosine x, that's also in the dv family. So let's look at one. For my first one, let's say I have the integral of x times e to the 2x dx. So the very first thing I'm going to say is that this has to be my dv because it has e to the x in it, even though it's 2x, doesn't matter. So then when I set up the formula, u equals something and dv equals something, the dv is e to the 2x dx. Technically, you're supposed to stick the dx next to the e to the 2x. And if you miss that, that's not a big deal. I'm not going to really care. And then u is the only thing left. u is your x. So then that means du, the derivative, is the derivative of x, which is 1. And technically, there needs to be a dx at the end of that. And again, that's just for notation purposes. I don't care too much if you forget that. And then v is going to be the integral of e to the 2x. And I know the integral of e to the 2x because if you do a u substitution on the 2x, it ends up being 1 half e to the 2x. That's your integral. Technically, there should be a plus c there, but I'm going to ignore the plus c for this integration by parts. And so the integral is 1 half e to the 2x. Obviously, I did quite a few steps there in my head, and that's fine. But if you're not at that level yet, you can't do it in your head, then you better be writing down the steps. You better be writing out the u substitution. So then now that we've got this, this is going to lead us to our final answer. Because remember, the formula is just uv minus the integral of v du. So that means I'm going to have x times 1 half e to the 2x minus the integral of v, which is 1 half e to the 2x times du, which is just 1 dx. So I'll just write dx. And now the question is, do I know this integral? And the answer is, yes, I do. It's very similar to before. There's going to be a 1 half coefficient from the 2x after I do my u substitution. Because there's now two 1 halves, it's going to make 1 fourth. So 1 fourth e to the 2x. And again, a lot of that I did in my head, but I did a u substitution. And if you do the u substitution, you should get the same answer as me. Do I recommend memorizing some of these easy integrals? Yes, I do, or at least the rules for them. And then the first part, I'll just rewrite and simplify. 1 half x e to the 2x, and then stick a plus c at the end there, and there's our answer. There's our integral. So that's it for that first one. Now we're going to look at a couple more. So for the next one, will be harder. I have x squared cosine of 1 half x dx. So this one will be more challenging because of the x squared. Immediately, I know I'm going to need two integration by parts. How do I know that? From experience, you will too soon. So first, I got to choose my u and my dv, just like before. Since this is a cosine one, I'm going to say that the cosine of 1 half x dx has to be my dv, making the x squared my u. Then I have to choose my du, which is the derivative of x squared. That's 2x dx. And then for the other one, it's the integral of this. So the integral of cosine is positive sine. 
and the one half is going to cause there to be a two in the numerator out in front. Again, I'm doing u substitution. I know the rules. I've memorized them. I can do them very quickly. As a matter of fact, I won the calculus integration tournament back in 2014. And obviously, I will brag about that whenever I can. So now we're going to plug in the formula uv minus the integral of v du. It's going to be x squared times 2 sine of 1 half x minus the integral of v du. 2 sine of 1 half x times 2x dx. And now I gotta ask myself, do I know this integral? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two, and I'm gonna take that two, and I'm gonna write it out in front as a coefficient of four. Still inside the integral, I'll move this x to the front, so it's x sine of 1 half x dx. And now you notice we have a second integration by parts that we gotta take care of. So what that means, I gotta choose my u and my dv again. So this time my u will just be x, and my dv will be the sine term sine of 1 half x dx, which then means du is going to be 1 dx, so I'll just write dx. And the integral of this will be, first the integral of sine is negative cosine of 1 half x, and then the 1 half, if I take care of that with a u substitution, will put a 2 out in front, so really it's negative 2 cosine. And now watch this when I put it together, because there's already this minus 4 out in front, that I'm going to have to put out like this, and then everything else is going to go in parentheses. So it's gonna be uv, so x times negative two cosine of one half x minus the integral of negative two cosine of one half x dx. And there we go, there's the correct integration by parts for that. I still have the x squared times two sine of 1 half x, that's still there out in front. I need to deal with that still. But before I do, I will take the integral of this. Now, since there's no more x's outside of the cosine, there's no more integration by parts, and I can pull the negative two out in front to make it plus two, and the integral of cosine is positive sine of 1 half x, and there will be another two out there from this 1 half because of the u substitution. Then I still have this, which is negative 2x cosine of 1 half x. And all of this is in parentheses multiplied by negative 4. With the, I'm just going to rewrite this as 2x squared sine of 1 half x out in front. And the only thing I have to do left is distribute this minus 4 to both terms here. So it's going to be 2x squared sine of 1 half x plus 8x cosine of 1 half x, and then negative 4 times 4 is negative 16 sine of 1 half x plus c. There we go. That was a monster of a problem. Now, by the way, whenever you do have two integration by parts or more, there is a shortcut you can use, and I'll just show you that real quick, how we get the same answer, like 10 times faster. I make a chart, a t-chart, of u and dv. I said my u was x squared from the very beginning, and I said my dv was gonna be the cosine of 1 half x. Now if I do this method, I'm taking the derivative all the way down my left side until I get to zero. So in other words, derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 2x is two, and the derivative of two is zero. That's it for the left side. And then for the right side, I'm gonna be taking the integral all the way down and that is going to look like integral of cosine 1 half x is 2 sine of 1 half x. Again, I'm doing the u substitution in my head. That's how I'm doing it so quickly. Calculus integration tournament, 2014. Then the integral of this would be negative 4 cosine of 1 half x. And then the integral of that is negative 8 sine of 1 half x. You'll notice I'm not putting the plus c or the dx's here. I don't have to do it for this method. This is a shortcut method and your teacher will accept it. And you'll also notice I'm stopping when I get to zero. Well, obviously this one will never be zero, but I'm stopping when the U becomes zero. And now here's what I am going to do. I am going to group these together like this, down the diagonal, X squared times that thing, 
and the first one will be positive. The next one, 2x times negative 4 cosine of 1 half x, and that's negative. And then the last one, 2 times negative 8 sine of 1 half x, and that will be positive. You'll notice the signs will always alternate between positive and negative. You'll also notice that the zero doesn't combine with anything, because number one, there's nothing there. And number two, even if there was something there, anything times zero is zero. That's why we stop there. And now if I want the final answer, I just need to combine these and be careful with the coefficients. Like for instance, the first one becomes 2x squared sine of 1 half x. The next one becomes, see how there's a minus and a minus? That's a double negative. It does become plus. 2 times 4 is 8, so 8x cosine of 1 half x. And then finally, a plus and a minus become minus. Minus 2 times 8 16, minus 16 sine of 1 half x. And then finally, plus c. This is the exact same answer we got a minute ago. If you don't believe me, look up. And you can notice this is a lot faster than taking integration by parts twice. So I definitely recommend learning this method whenever you have two integration by parts in one problem. This is commonly known as the tic-tac-toe method. They also call this tabular integration, that's the formal name. And if you've ever seen the calculus movie Stand and Deliver, then you would see there's a scene in the movie where they actually do this. And I know you've never seen that movie, but the reason I have to mention it is because there's literally only one movie ever that has to do with calculus, and it's called Stand and Deliver, and this is a scene from the movie. So, very exciting stuff. So now we're going to do one more today. It is the integral of the natural log of x dx. You may not think this is integration by parts. As a matter of fact, you may have memorized this integral because your teacher made you. But either way, we're going to prove right now that we can take this integral using integration by parts. So like we said earlier, whenever you have natural log of x, that's always your u. u is the natural log of x. Which then begs the question, what's dv? There's nothing left. That's exactly right. It's just, I guess you could say 1 dx, but it's really nothing. It's, it's not 0, because that would literally be 0, but it's as close to nothing as you can get. It's just the dx, and you can stick a 1 out in front if you want. That's optional, that 1 right there. And then I'm going to say du, the derivative of natural log of x, is 1 over x dx. And the integral of 1 dx, well, the integral of 1 is just x. So there you go. And then following the formula, uv, natural log of x times x, minus the integral of v du. And we'll get this right here. You'll notice x times 1 over x, they will just cancel, because one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator. So really, this is just the integral of 1 dx again, which we know what that is. It's just x. And then natural log of x times x is normally written like this, x natural log of x minus x plus c. There we go. That was super fast. And yeah, that's basically all the examples I have today. So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Hopefully integration by parts makes sense now. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.